Hello and welcome back to our same game tutorial for Vampire part 2 and let's just jump straight back into it shall we? Next we are going to create two more variables which are going to hold the correct and full file path to the icon images that we want to use. One variable will hold the idle state of the image and the other will hold the hover state. So let's make a new line and implement this. So the first one we can call idle path and here we want to construct the full path name to the idle image so we'll put quotation marks like this and then we want to refer to our icons folder so we we'll write icons slash and then the image name which we have put inside of this rand image variable so we can copy it and paste it inside square brackets inside of our string here and then let's finish it off by putting dot png so that we have a full and correct working file path and then let's do the same thing with our hover image so we can copy this line paste it underneath and rename it to hover path and then we can just make sure that we put underscore hover after the rand image placeholder so that we get the hover image so now that we have created these two image paths we can use these to create two rampi displayable images that are going to be used inside of our sprite objects so we are going to write idle image this time and then we're going to write image for the rampi image function and then we'll pass in our idle path and let's go ahead and do the same thing with the hover image so we'll write hover image and then image function and hover path so now comes the part where we actually are going to create the sprites with the sprite manager object and as i said before we're going to make references to these sprites inside of our icons list so let's go ahead and do that right now let's start with writing icons list and then since we want to add items to this list we'll do append and to create the sprites we're going to be referring to our sprite manager object so we're going to write icons dot create and inside of this create method of our sprite manager object we are going to create a transform displayable which is going to allow us to change the size of our icon image so that we will have it at the correct size as soon as we display it on the screen so we are going to write transform and then we're gonna say child and it's going to be our idle image and then we also want to say soon equals 0 0.5 so that we will have it at half of its size which is going to be correct on the screen the next thing we want to do is to add some attributes to our sprites which is going to help us later on once we want to do things with them such as move them around on the screen etc. To reference the sprite that we just created we can access the last item in a list. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to write icons list and inside of the brackets we'll put minus one to get the last item in the list. For the attribute we're going to call it index so we'll put dot index and for the value we want to put the sprites index position in the list and to get this value we can use the i variable from the for loop so now each of our sprites inside of the icons list will have its own unique index attribute value let's go ahead and create another one so we'll say icons list and then minus one inside of the brackets and this specific attribute is going to help us keep track of the icon type that this sprite contains and this is going to be useful later on when we want to check for any possible matches so let's call this icon type and for the value we can use this rand image variable which contains the image name so now that we have done that Let's go ahead and create two more attributes which are going to hold references 
to these two images that we have defined earlier. And this is going to make it a lot easier for us later on when we want to switch between these two images in different user events. So let's go ahead and create a new line. And we're going to say icons list again, and then minus one inside of the brackets. And this attribute we can call idle image. And then we'll put the idle image variable as the value. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one. So icons list. And we're going to call this hover image. And it's going to reference our hover image variable. So this is more or less it for this label where we have effectively created a list of sprites containing our icon images and then we have set up a few attributes for these sprites. But now we want a way of actually showing these icons on the screen and let the user be able to interact with them. So for that we're going to create a new screen where we're going to loop through our icons list to display each sprite on the screen. So let's go ahead and create a few empty lines here and then we'll say screen and we can name this screen same game. So inside of this screen we can begin by creating a frame and this frame will act as a sort of container for our grid and icons and inside of this frame I'm going to first of all add a background property and this is just going to give our frame a bit of a background color that will look good as a sort of backing for the grid and icons. And for this I found a 50% opacity white color looks good. And to create that we're going to first add two quotation marks and then hash symbol for a hexadecimal value. And then we're going to add the letter F six times for the white color. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then to make it 50% opacity, we'll just write 50 afterwards. The next thing we can do is to position the frame on the screen. And for this, we can use the X align and Y align properties. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say X align. And for this, we can put 0.2 as the value. And this will bring the frame more to the left side of the screen. Let's go ahead and do the Y align property. And here we can put 0.5 to make it centered vertically on the screen. Before we move on, I'd like to point out an error that I have made earlier on in the code and would like to correct right now so that we don't get any problems later on. And you may have already noticed this before me, but I'm referring to this piece of placeholder variables that we have put up here into these two strings. And this will generally work inside of pure RemPy code However, since we have defined a Python block here, and all of this code is pure Python code, this is not going to work. So we are going to want to change this to something that works for Python. And to do this, we're going to change these strings to formatted strings. So we're going to put, instead of these square brackets, we're going to put curly brackets and nothing inside of them. So let's do that with this as well. And then after the string, we're going to say dot format. So dot format. And these are formatting functions that applies to strings. And we're going to replace these curly brackets with whatever is put inside of this format function. And in this case, we're going to put our rand image variable inside of here so that we get the random image variable value to replace these curly brackets. So now that we have fixed that issue, we can go back into our screen same game and continue with the coding here. So now that we have created our frame and positioned it on the screen, we can go ahead and add some content to it. So the first thing we want to add is the actual grid since it's going to be displayed behind the icons. And to do this, we first want to create a few variables that are going to help us keep track of what current row and column that we are drawing onto the screen. So we're going to call the first one C row, which stands for current row. And since we're going to start on row zero and work our way down to the last row, we're going to put zero as the value. 
then the next one we can call current column and same here we're going to put 0 as the value and then we can go ahead and create a for loop which is going to be used to create and display each grid cell on the screen so we're going to write for i in range and inside of the range we're going to put our grid size variable so that we get a loop that will loop 100 times to show all of our 100 grid cells so let's type grid size and inside of this for loop we're going to create two different variables which are going to help us to position each of the grid cells on the screen so the first one we can call xp which stands for x position and for the value we are going to create a calculation which is going to be using our icon size variable icon padding variable as well as our c column variable so the basic calculation is going to look like this icon size times c column inside of these two brackets and then we're going to do plus another set of brackets and we're going to say icon padding times c column now what does this calculation actually do well we are taking our icon size variable and we're multiplying that by c column and the c column variable is actually going to progressively increase in value as we're going to add one to it for each iteration so that is going to give us 50 times 0 in the first iteration and then 50 times 1 in the next one and then 2 and 3 and so on and this is effectively going to create a row of grid cells that are tightly packed next to each other without any added spacing but then we have this section right here which is calculating the right amount of padding to add for each grid cell so together these two calculations are giving us a row of grid cells with two pixels of spacing between each one so now let's go ahead and create the next variable and we're going to call this one yp for y position and we're going to use the same calculation that we did for the xp variable so we're going to copy and paste it down here however we're going to want to swap this c column variable for the c row one so let's go ahead and do that and the c row variable is also going to be incremented for each iteration of the loop so now we have successfully created our xp and yp variables that are going to be used to position each grid cell horizontally and vertically on the screen and the next thing we can do now is to actually add our grid cell image to the screen so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to say image and then we're going to add the path to the image so icons slash grid cell dot png and then we're going to want to position this according to the variables that we created earlier so we're going to say xpos and then we're going to put the xp variable as the value and then ypos and the same thing here the yp variable as the value and now we want to make sure that we remember that we want to increment our c column and c row variables so that they will contain the right value for each iteration inside of our for loop so to do that we're first going to create a few empty lines down here and then we're going to create an if statement and this if statement is going to help us to check which current column that we are trying to draw a grid cell in and if you remember earlier on we created our icons per row variable and this we have set to 10 which means we only want 10 grid cells per row so when we create this if statement we're going to make sure that we're checking that we're not trying to draw a grid cell after this 10th column of our grid but this we are unfortunately going to have to do in part 3 as we are officially out of time for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one